old New Orleans is a city of sophistication, maturity, and great tradition. Its pro football team, the New Orleans Saints, is the youngest in the NFL. But in only their second season, the Saints have served notice that they are ready to challenge for a divisional title. New Orleans hopes might have rested on veterans like Jim Taylor, who helped the team get started, then retired after 10 super seasons in the NFL. But coach Tom Fears knows the foundation of the team is youth, youth and defense. He believes a new team must build a defensive nucleus first. And on this day, against the Cardinals, he proved he was well on his way. I'm Frank Lieber, and this is the NFL Game of the Week. In this St. Louis first visit ever to New Orleans, coach Charlie Winter made an important change in his offense when he installed Charlie Johnson at quarterback. Winter felt his regular starting quarterback, young Jim Hart, had been pressing, and so he decided to give him a weekend of rest as a hopeful cure. Behind Hart, St. Louis had lost its first two league games. During that time, Hart hit for only 41% of his passes and had three intercepted. Johnson, an eight-year veteran and sometimes brilliant passer, was making his first start in two years. He's serving active duty with the Army and is available to the club on weekends only. His lack of opportunity to practice with the team would prove to be a decisive factor in the game as Johnson, quite obviously, was rusty and off his timing. Time after time, he would overshoot his receivers. On the first series of downs, St. Louis looked like they might march the length of the field. But Johnson's scatter arm proved fatal to the drive, and the Cardinals were forced to go for three points. Jim Bakken's field goal attempt was blocked by Dave Witzel and returned by Bo Burris deep into Cardinal territory. New Orleans quarterback Bill Kilmer immediately went with his new star, Don McCall. On a short third down possession pass, the crackling, aggressive tackling for which number eight all-pro Cardinal safety Larry Wilson is famous for is apparent when seen from two angles. Wilson's play forced the Saints to try a field goal, and Charlie Durkee's kick was high and true. The Saints were out in front, three to nothing. Anxious to come right back for a score, Johnson went to the air. Again, his inactivity was all too apparent, as he consistently missed connections with the fine Cardinal receivers, and St. Louis was forced to punt. Kilmer opened his club's second drive with a give to number 33, fullback Randy Schultz, for long yardage. The ground camera shows the 24-year-old fullback can hit a hole quickly and knows how to maneuver once through it. Another of the Saints' fine young setbacks is number 36, Don McCall, who last week set the club record for running yardage in one game with 127 yards. One of the veterans who play an important role on this young New Orleans team is number 87, tight end Monty Stickles, who along with split end Dave Parks and flanker Dan Abramowitz give the Saints an excellent receiving core. 
After this Kilmer scramble, inexperience brought this New Orleans drive to a halt. Number 59, linebacker Ernie Clark, who was to later make one of the most important plays in the game, sliced in to make the first of his six unassisted tackles. A second look at the play shows sophomore McCall completely missed his block on Clark, allowing him to penetrate the Saints' backfield. An enterprising lunge over his blocker by number 79, Chuck Walker, caused Kilmer to drop the football and end the Saints' drive with Durkee's 42-yard field goal attempt, which was wide to the right. The two fine defensive plays by the Cardinals, which thwarted the New Orleans drive, helped considerably lessen the pressure on Johnson. He ended the first quarter with a pinpointer to number 81, huge tight end Jackie Smith. The ground camera amply displays the quickness and strength of the 230 pound Pro Bowl performer. The first quarter ended with a minor disagreement between Smith and his tackler and the Saints ahead, three to nothing. The opening play of the second period showed that Johnson was still having his troubles, well overthrowing number 80, Dave Williams, a rookie sensation last year. Williams went into the game leading the league with pass catching with 11. After a run went nowhere, Johnson went down the middle on his next pass and hit Williams with number 12 to put the Cardinals into New Orleans territory. Number 23, all-pro halfback Johnny Rowland became one of four unassisted victims of veteran defensive back Dave Witzel. <music> Trying to move on the ground, St. Louis found the Saints' defense too good to run against. And once again, Johnson went the air out. And once again, the green New Orleans defense proved up to the task of stopping him. Number 29, rookie Gene Howard made the last minute save. The field goal attempt by the usually accurate Jim Bakken was unsuccessful again. On the next play from scrimmage, quarterback Kilmer, who is known for his unorthodox passing style, went for the bomb to Monty Stickles, who took it past the 50 into Cardinal territory. Another look at the play reveals Stickles made a seemingly effortless one-handed grab of the pass. With the passing attack clicking well, Kilmer didn't hesitate to try to exploit St. Louis refurbished defensive backfield, which included three new men. One of them, however, number 29, veteran Brady Key snared this near touchdown pass intended for Abramowitz. The Cardinals were penalized one half the distance to the goal for clipping on the interception. Given yet another chance, quarterback Johnson again found the Saints defense too stubborn to move. Doug Atkins' penetration of the Cardinal line resulted in a loss. Coach Veer's emphasis on defense paid off also on the next play as Lou Cordelion broke through the veteran St. Louis line. This was a big play as it forced the Cardinals to punt from their own end zone and the resultant return by number 42, the speedy John Gilliam, 
put New Orleans in excellent field position. top camera shows that Gilliam bumped into his own blocker, or he might have gone all the way. Kilmer employed the lightning fast McCall to good advantage. Then look for number 46, Dan Abramowitz, his favorite receiver for the big one. And he found him for the touchdown. Second year man Abramowitz clearly beat number 48, rookie defender Bob Atkins from grambling on the play. And the Saints were now up by 10. With a half running out, Johnson, who completed only one third of his passes the entire game, needed the air arm to beat the clock. But his rustiness and defensive plays like this one by Witzel plagued him again. And again. With less than a minute left, Johnson found his tight end, Smith, near the sideline for the first down. But today, Charlie Johnson might have been wishing for a quick change out of his Cardinal uniform, back into Army fatigues as he continually missed connections with his receivers. charged up New Orleans defense made the last plays of the half painful and frustrating. The Saints went into the locker room with a one-sided 10 to nothing lead. Cardinal drive of the second half seemed to continue their frustration. Johnson's pass was complete, but the receiver, Conrad, was detected with a foul. Then, on the very next play, Johnson's errand pass found St. rookie Gene Howard, and New Orleans was on their way to a bigger lead. John Gilliam, number 42, took an end around to the Saints' 47. Then it was last week's hero, Don McCall's turn to move the ball. Number 36 is a big, strong setback whose size and speed make him a valuable weapon in Tom Fear's youthful arsenal. A play-action pass from Kilmer to Jim Hester, number 84, accounted for 19 more yards and put the ball on the Cardinal 13. From here, Kilmer went to his clutch receiver, Dan Abramowitz, who made the score look easy. On a replay, Kilmer's lust and picture execution is obvious, but in football, 
Results are not dependent on pictures. New Orleans had now built a 17-point lead midway through the third quarter and was making it look easy, much to the delight of its cheering section. Charlie Johnson's erratic passing was a major problem for most of the day. But here, he was right on target to tight end Jackie Smith. A good play by Saints linebacker Whittingham broke up Johnson's next pass attempt. Trying desperately to get on the boards, Johnson called a flare to Crenshaw but it resulted in a loss. On third down, Johnson's staleness became even more evident and forced a field goal, which was missed. However, the Cardinals held and in turn forced a punt from Tom McNeil. For the first time in the game, a ray of hope appeared for St. Louis as number 26, Chuck Latourette, returned the punt 45 yards deep into Saints territory. It was this man who was to play a key role in the outcome of the game. Once again, it looked like a big play had given the Cardinals a much needed boost. Johnson hit Conrad on the Saints 15 and Roland took a pitch out for six more. But as they had done all day, once inside the 20, the Saints' defense stiffened. First, it was their line. Then a little good fortune. And finally, on fourth down, it took a great play by number 16, defender Bo Burris. The Saints have held once more. Like a Broadway play, however, football has two acts. And in the last scene of this drama, there was a noticeable change. The Cardinal defense started to play to its reputation as one of the finest in football and repeatedly shut off the Saints' ground and air attack, giving their subpar offense a chance to make up a 17-point deficit with less than eight minutes to play. Fourth down, New Orleans punt. We can see one of the key plays of the game as a Saint lineman saw it, while he and 10 other Saints futilely tried to tackle Chuck Latourette. This 86 yard touchdown return gave St. Louis its first points, and more important, the mental lift it sorely needed. Quarterback Billy Kilmer and the Saints kept their cool, but the Cardinals charged up defense, stopped them, and again forced a punting situation. Bad snap from center and a fierce rush by two Cardinal defenders caught punter Tom McNeil for a 14-yard loss. First and 10 on the Saints 10. 
Johnny Rowland tried to bull through the Saints, but Bo Burris came up fast to stop him. On the last play, Rowland tried to pick his way through the line and then keep his balance after Burris stood him up, but the whistle blew the play dead. On Johnson's most accurate pass of the day to number 80, Dave Williams, it was now 17 to 14 with five minutes to play. The Saints tried some fancy stuff to get an insurance score. An option pass from Tom Barrington to Stickles, who led the Saints with four receptions, worked for 23 yards. Then it was Kilmer to Abramowitz, who made a leaping catch for 28 more yards. Once again, however, the Cards' defense held and forced a field goal attempt by Durkee. The kick was good, and St. Louis now had two minutes to score a touchdown against a tough defensive unit. Chuck Latourette is the Cardinal putter, but today his forte was returning kicks. Not only did he run one back for the Cards' first score, but he started the Cards' final drive with this 32-yard return from the end zone. In one of the many big plays of the game, number 80, Dave Williams, took the Cards' second successful end around of the game, 43 yards to the Saints' 25. Watch a perfect blitz by Fred Whittingham temporarily halt the Cards' momentum. Key penalties always help determine the outcome of a game. This pass interference call gave St. Louis the ball at the two with one minute to play. The Saints defense then proudly held out the powerhouse Cardinal backs on two successive plays. But on third down, Willis Crenshaw slipped into a hole of a right guard for the go-ahead touchdown. On the replay, it's obvious that Crenshaw, number 33, did get over. Cardinals 21, Saints 20. An almost impossible task faced quarterback Billy Kilmer to lead the Saints to within field goal range in 40 seconds. Miraculously, he did just that. He did it with the help of number 42, John Gilliam. A pass interference penalty. And an 11 yard run off a swing pass by number 34, Tony Lorick. There was time for one more play, a field goal attempt from 34 yards. This was the result, as the clock ran out on the Saints, one point shy of victory. For Ernie Clark, the man who blocked the field goal, as for the rest of the Cardinals, it was their first victory of the season, but a shaky one at best. For Tom Fear's Saints, a disappointing and heartbreaking defeat in their quest for a century division title.